Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Obox, and in this graphics tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at spectral waveforms in After Effects to kind of give you that really cool effect that you see in maybe music videos, video game montages, or um, even music videos um, themselves, uh, which I think I said already, but anyways, we're just gonna get right in it, and uh, let's open up After Effects here. So like I said, this, this waveform effect, I'm sure you've seen it all over the place, and it might be something that you, um, have maybe seen before, but you never really thought about maybe trying to do it, um, or maybe you just had no idea how to do it, and now is a good time to maybe learn, um, whatever. But uh, we're just gonna make this competition 20 seconds. I normally do this 60 frames a second, or 59.94, but audio tracks don't like that very much. They get really slowed down for some reason when you add them to After Effects. So we're just gonna leave this as 29.97 um, for this video. I'm just going to hit OK, um, zoom in here, we're going to add a background, layer new solid, which by now, if you've been following all of my tutorials, um, you should know by heart. So we're just going to create that layer, and we're going to create a new layer. And it's going to be a solid, and we can make this any color, it doesn't matter, um, because it changes later anyway. So we're, this dark gray solid layer, we're just going to lock, that way we can't move it around, which we can move around the white one. Um, and we're actually going to add an audio track. So let's just get in here. Uh, let's see if I could find a good asset. Uh, music looks good. YouTube, no. What do you say? Extras. And this is a good song. We'll use this one. So I'm just going to drag it into my project area. And I'm just going to drag this over into After Effects. So I'm actually just going to drag this out a little bit. My effects panel, I'm just going to search for wave form actually let's let's do this let's search for audio um, because these are the two um effects that we're going to be taking advantage of in this video and there's two different there's two different effects for two different purposes um basically um the spectrum is the audio in the frequency domain and the audio waveform is the audio file in the time domain so um over time um, you know, as people talk, for example, um, as I talk in this video, this would be the waveform in the time domain, um, whereas in the frequency domain, things are a little different. And I accidentally opened Excel, so I'll just close that. So um, again, both kind of give do have different effects. So we're just going to start out with a waveform, audio waveform, and it gives us this line. And that's why the color didn't matter because it automatically gives us a color. Up here in audio layer, I'm just gonna highlight this song. If you don't know this song, um, Safakash, Deep Inside, it's a great song. You could actually find him on soundcloud.com slash Safakash, um, if I pronounce that right, which I'm pretty sure I did. So you see, as soon as we attribute this layer or this effect um, on this white layer, which we'll rename to um, audio, audio visual, And we'll just rename this back, this dark layer to background, um, just so it makes it a little bit easier for you. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and lock that layer again. So uh, here we go, and this is in the in the uh, waveform frequent or the waveform, um, I guess domain. By the way, if you want to get to the um, if you want to get to the spectral domain from the waveform, you just use a Fourier transform in real life. Um, I don't know if that's useful to you. It's something that I've learned in school. So anyways, jumping back in here, you can see here that when I hit play, um, it just kind of plays across as time moves on, you know, and you could tell that it's in the time domain because the waveform travels across the screen, uh, whereas in the frequency domain, um, it does not. So. Um, just digging in here, seeing seeing the effects that you can do, you can change the number of samples, which in this line type you can't really tell, but if I change this to dots, you'd be able to see um, more clearly as I increase the samples, um, they get closer together or farther apart. Um, the maximum height, essentially as time goes on, let's see if I find a good, like right there. If I increase the height, it just determines how high I allow this to go. Um, audio duration is kind of how long how long the audio kind of sticks around for. So if I do this zero, there's nothing there because the audio doesn't stick around at all. If I do this for one second, it gives a certain effect. Um, and if I it, one second makes it a little bit smoother, um, but it's a, it's not high enough resolution. So maybe ten might look good. Um, again, these are all just things things that you could change um, if you'd like. 
maybe even two. Uh, again, it just kind of gives you different effects here. So the waveform effect is a little is a little limited in comparison to the spectral one, um, but just kind of finishing off here, you could change the thickness of these, um, the softness. I like leaving it down at like zero um, or near zero, maybe five percent, just to kind of give it a little bit of roundness. Um, and then random seed, which I don't really like. It kind of adds a, a random effect to it, which which I, I prefer it to be exactly how the audio is. Um, and then you could change the colors here. So let's say you want to make this green. You can let's say the inside's green, the outside's dark green. Maybe there might be something that you might like. Um, and then you could change this to a line if you know. However, there are, there's a lot of different things that you could do here um, that that kind of gives various various effects. So um, that's kind of just taking a look at this particular waveform. And this path tool, by the way, if you click on it, it says none. And what this path tool essentially allows you to do is if I create a shape like that, um, actually, let's let's make this a little bit more clear. So on this audio visual, if I come in and mask it by pressing Q on the keyboard over this, I get to this to the circle um, and I mask it. I can come in here and do mask and uh, you'll notice that now it follows the mask now, but you also notice that it kind of bleeds out. Uh, what you do there is you just open the mask and you expand it. And essentially what that does um, is, is, is by the way, when you uncheck that, it shows you the mask. Um, what, what the, what the expanding the mask actually does is it just increases the overall size of the mask and you can increase this all the way because it doesn't really matter. You're not even going to see it. It's just a mask. Um, and so that way you kind of get this effect which might be something that you might be interested in. Now waveform is a little funky because you'll notice that it, it appears to be turning um, and that sometimes is what you're looking for, sometimes is not what you're looking for. So it just kind of just depends on, on if, if that looks good to you or not. So jumping over now, let's go ahead and delete audio waveform and let's add audio spectrum. So let's delete this mask as well dropping audio spectrum on here and it appears to be the same thing um, and when you first watch it there does not there doesn't appear to be any difference except for the fact that um, the starting and ending frequencies are a little different um, essentially start frequency that's the frequency all the way to the left end frequency is the frequency all the all the way to the right um, you might want to set this to zero and set this to maybe 2000 is probably good um, that's just the frequency domain of the waveform so frequency bands acts just the same way as um, number of samples did previously. Maximum height works the exact same. Um, oh, by the way, the reason why there's no movement, audio layer, I got to make sure to change this to the song. There you go. So now you can see a little bit more clearly what these do. So maximum height, it increases the height of the total bands. Um, end frequency, um, again, it just kind of moves moves the if this right here is 20 let's say and I increase this that means 20 moves over to the left because the percentage of the whole line you know if that makes sense I, I don't know if that made any sense but we'll just leave that at 2000 basically all you have to do is just mess with it until you kind of get the motion that you're looking for so um, continuing audio duration that's the same thing if this is at zero you don't get any movement if you set this to 10 um, it's a little bit smoother if you set this to maybe 20, you know, you get the smoothness as well, but you do also get the the uh, jagged when when music gets louder. So um, that's that. Thickness, again, same thing. Um, softness, again, the same thing. And this looks horrible. Don't do this, but you could if you, if you would like. So even 20 is a little thick. We could even drop this down to maybe probably 10, probably even five looks good. Um, and so now we're getting somewhere. Uh, let's go ahead and change these colors to, what do you say we make these? Uh, I don't know. You know what? The colors are fine. We'll leave the colors. Um, again, the blending overlap, all that does is, is affect the mask. Um, you could change the hue over time. So, or, you know, across the waveform, that's hue interpolation. And the higher you go, the more colors you get. 
So you could make this a pride uh, if you'd like. And you could also set actually keyframes here. So if you want, you know, so that way the audio, the you know, it kind of changes with the music. But we don't really want to do that. We'll just set this back down to zero and zero. Um, coming down here, display options, analog lines gives you kind of a more analog signal. You might also actually, you can actually use this also, I mean, if you're doing a video, let's say about like World War II or something, or maybe sci crazy science experiments, you might have this on like, um, I don't know what they're called, but it shows the waveform. Um, analog dots is where is another option, um, but digital kind of looks the best. Now side options, this is pretty important. Um, if you're just one at the top, you could just do the top. If you just want the bottom, you could just do the bottom, A and B, or you could do both. If you're just doing one top, you might do it like that. Um, and you might come over here and put this at the bottom. By the way, this is the start and end point. You might put the end point down at this bottom. You might, so this is the X, X, Y, Y. We probably want these both to be the exact same. That way um, it's at the very bottom of the screen. Now we might want to, let's say, change the start frequency to like 20 and do the maximum height to like 2000. So now you get an effect that essentially kind of looks like this, which is something that you probably have seen um, a lot. Now, again, wh what you could do is you come in here, you can create a circle, uh, move it to the center of the uh, composition. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe that's too big of a circle. Let's uh, actually make this circle a little bit smaller. That's probably good. Um, we're going to want to center this. Now this color is a little hard to see, so we'll just change the color to red. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to Eclipse, Path, right click, Convert to Bezier Path. That gives me a path keyframe that I could use. I'm going to go to the Audio Waveform, and I'm going to right click, go up to, up to Mask, New Mask. So essentially that created the mask that we were looking for. So if we wanted, we could add the audio frame to the mask and that goes around the around the, the border, but that's not what we want. We want the, the audio waveform to go around the circle. So I'm going to open up this mask um, and I'm going to select this path, copy it, control C, hover over this, the mask path, control V. And now I'm just going to make this layer invisible. And now we have the waveform on a circle. And again, we're going to want to expand that so that way we can see it a little bit better. So you might have a situation where you might want this to maybe even rotate. So we'll set a keyframe there, keyframe here, maybe add some rotation. And you might have a situation where you want your logo, let's say in the middle. So we'll just come in and we'll just find a an asset here. Um, let's see here, what do we have in objects? Let's just drag this face in here. Oh, we should probably let this thing not just kill itself. Um, and then we'll just drag, let's say, a logo in, S on the keyboard, scale it down, and this logo clearly doesn't go with the color scheme. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And anyways, guys, thanks for watching.